it's, it's a great respite from the city. The whole world seems to disappear. You, you're totally in, engrossed and involved in just what's around you. It's a place of learning and experience with nature that I think speaks to who the EV are. What could be more special than being in a nature preserve and being in the very preserve that we started teaching about? The Environmental Volunteers is building our future through a wonderful opportunity presented by the City of Palo Alto. We're excited to open an environmental education center in the Palo Alto Baylands that will complement the resources the community can already find in the preserve. By combining those wonderful experiences that already exist in the preserve with new educational programs and resources that the Eco Center will offer, visitors to the preserve will have a more enriched and exciting experience. The City Council voted unanimously to partner with environmental volunteers and work together to restore this gorgeous building and really bring environmental education and the Baylands and this beautiful marshland to the community. The Eco Center is going to be several things. A home to the EVs, also a nature center for everyone to enjoy, and a learning center so that we can be much more visible to the whole Bay Area. The development of the Eco Center was structured in two phases. In phase one, we successfully raised $2.4 million and rehabilitated the building's entire exterior, as well as framing the building's interior. My firm has a specialty in existing buildings and giving them new life, specifically with historic buildings. We also have done a lot of work with Birch Clark buildings in particular, and Birch was sort of the father of Palo Alto architecture. The C. Scott building, which was done in the, in the 30s, clearly he was just playing with a very simple palette of materials to evoke a nautical theme, which was in keeping with the use of the building. It, it actually was a boathouse. The boat building, as it is affectionately called, fell into disrepair. It was battered by the tides and severely weathered. And yet, it provided a wonderful opportunity to develop a new home for the EV and a new center for environmental education for the community. So that's where the environmental volunteers are sort of the heroes of the story. They had the imagination and the vision to say this could be a, kind of an iconic building for us and, and speak to our mission. And so I, I just think they're, they're the real heroes here. The community will have a lot of opportunities at the Eco Center to engage with nature as a teacher, a teacher who teaches by hands-on methods. The environmental volunteers is doing the right kind of teaching as far as I'm concerned and that building will only enhance the opportunities to do so. If buildings could talk, I'm sure that there would be so many wonderful stories this building could tell. And one of the nicest things is that all the stories would be about making children's lives better. Phase two of the campaign was launched this year. Our phase two goal is $1.4 million and we'll finish the building's renovation, design and install educational displays, and open the Eco Center to the public. This is a perfect opportunity to support EVs in a big way, and it's also an opportunity to make a difference. We like to give to things where we can make a difference with the amount of money that we're capable of giving. Because the Eco Center is envisioned as an educational resource for the community, we invite you to learn more about it and to consider supporting its development and programs. And I think down the road, and I see myself standing on the decks out in front of the Eco Center. I'll be standing there with my grandchildren and we'll be talking about things and just soaking in nature in a way that otherwise would be impossible. It gives me goosebumps actually thinking about it. <laughs>